how is time created? Or rather, how is the illusion of time created? If time is real, it must exist independent of thought. So put your thoughts to one side for the moment. It is not necessary to get rid of thought. Just put it to one side and don't refer to it in this exploration of our experience of time. Without thought, all we know is the current experience. In fact, even with thought, all we know is the current experience. But thought persuades us to think that we know something other than the current experience. But now that thought has been put on one side and we are referring only to our direct, intimate, immediate experience, we can see clearly that all we know is this experience. Time is the imagined duration between two events or experiences. But ask yourself, are there ever two experiences present at the same time? Or is there just always experiencing now? One seamless experiencing. Now without reference to thought, try to avoid the now. Try to avoid this experience now. How could we do that without referring to thought? Where do we go? Where could we go? Other than remaining now. Try to escape the now. Try to move out of the now into a past and a future. Indeed, without reference to thought, is there a past or a future? Try to find the actual past and future that exists in experience itself, not just as an idea or thought. Try to make contact now in your experience with that past and future, not through thinking, not through imagining, not through memory, but in your actual experience. Step out of the now. For instance, try to step just two seconds out of the now into the past. Can you do that? Can you step two seconds into a future? Make no reference to thinking. Thinking, of course, can imagine such a past and a future. But we are interested here in the actual experience of time, the reality of time, if there is such a thing. So don't go into the, a past or a future through thought. Actually go there in your experience. Can you go there? Have you ever, or could you ever, go to a past or a future? Could you or have you ever experienced a past or a future? 
Has anybody or could anybody ever experience a past or a future? See clearly that no such experience is possible. It is always now. But in fact, even that is not right, because to say it is always now implies that the now is a fragment, a moment, moving along an everlasting line of time. But in the absence of the experience of such a line of time, we cannot say that it is always now, but rather that it is eternally now. In other words, this now is the ever-present now, the only now there ever is. See that this now is not going anywhere. It is not moving along in time. This now, this now that is the only now there ever is, is eternally present. It doesn't go anywhere. All seeming things come to it, come to the now. But even that is not true, because from where would they come? They do not come from a past or a future into the now. There is no past and future from which the current experience comes. The current experience is only the now. It doesn't even arise in the now, because to arise in the now would suggest that it arises arises out of something which is not now and appears in the now. The current experience doesn't arise or appear. It is eternally present. It doesn't come and go. If it were to come and go, it would have to come from somewhere and disappear into somewhere or something. But there is nothing other than the now from which experience could come or into which it could vanish or disappear. The now, this present experiencing, is all that ever is. It eternally is. It is ever present now. And this now is the substance of all seeming things. When thinking arises and imagines that there is a substance other than this ever-present now, time is born. When thinking imagines that the now, this current seamless experience, is divided into parts, objects, entities, selves, and the world, at that moment, the past and the future spring into apparent existence, and the separate I ventures off into a far-off country. The far-off country is not a land. The far-off country is time. It is the playground of the separate self, in which the resistance and seeking of the separate self finds its home. The only place the separate self cannot be is now. Hence, time is the first, the newborn child, the firstborn child of the separate self with the belief that I am something separate from, other than, or apart from, the seamless intimacy of experiencing. With this belief, a separate self is born, and it is this imaginary separate self that ventures off into an imaginary land called time, called the past and the future. Experience itself knows no such thing. 
Experience doesn't know time. Experience knows only the eternal now. It is only an imaginary self that knows imaginary time. <laughs>